Hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Sorry guys, and this is close up education. But for you, you should be calling me Usem Numzan. Why Usem Numzan? Because of I'll be bringing you topics such as ratios and proportions. Nah. What? Usem Numzan, are ratios really that important? Nah. Yes, nah. ratios are very, very important. Why? Because we use ratios to compare relationship between values by division. Let me write it down. A comparison. Oh, relationship. Oh, relationship. Between values by division. Yes, we use ratios to compare relationship between values by division. How do you recognize if a question is about ratios? It has these two things. It might have this or U2. What do I mean by that? It could be 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 2. Or even you could write it on a fraction form like 1 is to 2. In a fraction, 1 is to 2 simply means half. But then in a ratio, it can mean a different thing. It can say one sandwich for two people. One sandwich for two people. It compares things of values one to another. Let's continue. Okay, example number one. Example number one. Let's say you are comparing between six oranges to three apples. Like six oranges, one, two, three, four, five, six. To how many? To three apples, one, two, three. Six oranges to three apples. Okay, write it in a ratio form. How do you write it in a ratio form? You just say six is to three, right? Six is to three. You could also write it like this, six to three. Or six to three, right? But then because of a ratio can also be expressed in a fraction. It means it should also be simplified. How do you simplify this problem? Okay, you say 6 is to 3, right? The trick around ratios is to always divide or multiply with the same value. The value has to be the same. And our same value in this problem will be 3. 3. Three. We'll be dividing both of these numbers with 3. So 6 divided by 3 and what we have here, we have 2. And 3 divided by 3, 1. They cancel each other. So what is our answer here? 2 is to 1. 2 is to 1. Meaning in 2 oranges, you will find 1 apple. For 2 oranges, 1 apple. For 2 oranges, 1 apple. Right? Simplified enough? Yes. Let's make another example. Okay. Example number 2. Example two, let's say you are in a cage, young tall, and uh, this cage has about 540 dogs. The cage has about 540 dogs, and it also has about 675 cats, right? Let's write it down. Dogs to cat. This is our ratio. You first write the first object from the statement and the second one from the statement. You can't do it versus verse. And you call them a cat, they are 540 dogs to 675 cats. Have to first start with dogs. Let's see, we have what? How many numbers? 540, 2, Okay, and the question say, simplify these ratios. How do you simplify the ratios? You first look at the numbers you are given. All right. Uh, 540, what? 540, it doesn't have any odd numbers or whatever, so we'll be skipping it. We're going to 675. 675 has an odd number, which is that 5. So meaning we'll be using 5 to divide both values. We use 5 to divide both of these values. So it will be like this. 5 is to 5, meaning 4, 540 divided by 5, which is 108, is to 675 divided by 5, meaning it's 185. And now we have 108 to 185. That is not simplified enough, right? It is not, meaning we have to continue and dig deeper to simplify this ratio. 
The trick is you must first start by dividing by 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 and etc to see if the answer will give you a whole number without any decimal point or whatever because of we haven't arrived at the unit form okay so what number will be using here nine nine is the number we'll be using so meaning we'll continue this equation and divide it by nine so it's nine is to 108 divided by nine is our obvious 12. Then 185 divided by 9 is our obvious 15. Right? But then, ah oh man, we have 12 and 15. Are these the most simplified? Are, are we done here? No, we can't be done here because of we can still simplify U12. And we can still simplify U15 with the same number. And we divide by 3. So what is it? It's 12 to 15 divided by 3. Both values must be divided with the same value. So it's 12 divided by 3, we have our 4 here. It's 2. 15 divided by 3, we have our 5 here. Right? Then this is in its simplest form. You can never go down from 4 is to 5. This is where we end. And hey, hey, hey! Concentrate! Because we are going to question 3. Question 3, let's say uh, Semnum Zane can bake 14 cakes in 6 hours. Wow! 14 cakes in six hours so these are cakes this is time right these are cakes this is time then equation 80 how many cakes can sem numzane bake in 15 hours all right sem numzane 15 hours how many cakes can you bake these two we don't know this is what we want and this is the time where we introduce a formula called the cross multiply formula you remember the cross multiply formula it looks like this yes you do remember so we'll be saying uh, the unknown multiplied by six right which is the unknown multiplied by six then it's equal to 14 multiplied by 15 right 14 multiplied by 15 that's what we know right this is the cross multiplication formula then obviously our answer will be 210 210 is our answer then we'll still be having this problem here right six how do we remove that six what do you do? You divide it by the same number. So what are we going to do? Divide it by 6, right? And obvious, everybody knows what you do on the left, you definitely have to do on the right. Hey, concentrate. Divide it by 6. What do we have here? This is what we have. This cancels this and we are left with the unknown. And here, 210 divided by 6, we obviously have 85 cakes. Sam Numzane can bake 35 cakes in 15 hours. Oh, this guy is so, so, so impressive. This very last question involves a mixed ratio. So if you made it this far, congratulations, because of you are going to finish your paper with full flipping marks. Yes, let's continue. You have reached our final question. All right, question four. Let's say... Uh, you've been saving since you save him mal from January. You've been saving 10 cents, 20 cents, and 50 cents. Right. 10 cents, 20 cents, and 50 cents. Right. And we are given a ratio. They say a uh, ratio of the cents you've been saving look like this. Is 3, is 2, 4, is 2, 7. This is the ratio we have. And we are also given a total of coins that are inside Okay, they are saying Zama coins way to I-102. So you've been saving from January until December. Really? Ama coins I-102? What the? Okay, never mind that. Let's continue. Sharp. But Ama 10 cent. I'm going to 112 if you are given this ratio. What do you use? The cross multiplication formula. Kanjan, simple. Pega Kanjan. You just write your ratios 3 is to 4 is to 7. Right? 3 is to 4 is to 7 is the ratio I give it. So what is our total? Total is very important. Masses Koloma about mixed ratios. The total. How many? 3 plus 4 is obviously our 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. So what do we, do we have here? We have 14 and the total of total coins is 102 that's what we know local as well as this one as well as now local as well as. question it's anger comma 10 cent 
Gula total coins, which is 112. Okay. Then let's say uh, I'm a, we use a cross multiplication. So it's 3 divided by the unknown, which is obviously equals to 14 our totals. And so like, this is what we have. Cross multiply. Then what do we have here? If you remember cross multiply, we get it there. This is what do we have. 14 equals to 3 times 12. 112. Sharp. Right? 3 times 12, we obviously have 3, 3, 6. Right? 3, 3, 6. Then we still have this problem that we talked about with question 3. If you've been watching the video, you would understand how we solve the problem. We just divided by 14, the very same number, so they could cancel each other. 14 equals to 3, 3, 6 divided by 14. What you do on the left, you also do on the right. And what do we have here? We have our guidance equals to 20. Flipping 4. Young tall. Meaning, what am I 10 cent? I'm a 10 cent. I'm a 10 cent. I'm a 10 I'm a 10 cent. 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 I'm a 10 cent.